Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Today in this video, we're going to be assembling this mosh of pieces into hopefully a prototype of a drum trigger using an IKEA, I think this is just like a, a, a stove pot holder of some kind, like you know you put your pots on there once you've used them, uh, an old computer mouse, which I'm just going to lay upside down, uh, a piezo uh, a piezo disc and just some uh, guitar cable and uh, some guitar jacks. So with that said, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is just use this drill bit and just make my way through that piece of cork in the center. This is a prototype, so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Okay, now that we have our hole, I'm going to move on to assembling the piezo transducer and the guitar cable. In order to do that, I'm going to need to get some guitar cable over here. I've got the piezo sensor, uh, sorry, transducer, and I'm just going to sort of uh, take the ends off this cable. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my soldering iron here to tin these wires. It's very hard to do this without a uh, set of helping hands, which I don't have here right now. There we go. So that one's tinned. Now I'm just going to slide some heat shrink tubing over these joints before I solder it together. And then let's join those connections quickly. Just a brief solder. Just heat those both up. Okay, and I'm just going to use this uh, heat gun here. Just to warm those up and get that heat shrink to close down. And there we have it. The piezo transducer is now attached to the uh, guitar jack cable. And we'll move over to the other side now. Now for the other side of this cable, I'm going to be doing the same thing where the white side is going to be the sleeve and the red side is going to be the tip. So let's go ahead and cut some cable. Okay, let's go ahead and tin both sides of this cable. Tin the positive side. Uh, let's also tin the connector. Just put some blobs of solder on there like that. So with those now tinned, I'm just gonna trim these wires back a little bit. A bit more reasonable for this cable. And then what I like to do when I'm making these jacks is I will pull out the inside. I'm just using a pair of scissors for this pull these terminals out just a little bit, makes it easier for me to work with, and then I'll push them back in once I'm done. We are done. So that's now done. Then what I'll do is I'll push this cable in, clamp down these in, inner sections like that, make sure they're not touching, and then I just use my hands to clamp this bit here down. And of course, like you always do, I've forgotten to put the end on. <laughs> if this works, we will go ahead and make some 3D printed parts to make like a proper uh, symbol of some kind. So now what we have is we have a tip with the piezo on it and we have a tip with the guitar jack on it. We can go ahead and hot glue this down to our piece of cork. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to sort of position this where I want it. It's gonna be halfway between the hole and the end of the cork. Okay, so let's go ahead and hot glue this in place. Just gonna put a blob of hot glue down. And let's put that piezo sensor right on top of it and squish it down. Sorry, transducer. My, my bad, there we go. And secured to our piece of cork. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna route this cable where I want it. And I'm just gonna lay down some hot glue right underneath it for strain relief. Okay, now that our main areas of glue are down, I'm just gonna go ahead and add more glue just to hold this whole piece down. Okay, so with our piezo transducer in place, with our cable attached correctly, and our cable hot glued down, I'm gonna go ahead and take our computer mouse mat, and I'm gonna hot glue that on top of the cable, just like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and just put down a good amount of hot glue right up to the edges just to hold this piece on. 
just like that. Over the sensor is fine. As long as it holds it down, we wanna get co good contact between all of this. And then I'm just gonna take my mouse mat and just place it down on top and just press to get that to connect really well. Okay, so with all of that hot glued together, let's use our drill bit to just make our way through the mouse pad. Okay, so our test drum is ready. Let's take a drumstick and see what it sounds like. To me, that sounds exactly the same as just one of my rolling pads. It's not too loud. Let's go ahead and connect this up to the drum kit and uh, we'll find out if it works. So I've got my TD17KVX here. I'm going to unplug one of my auxiliaries and plug this one in. Well, since that seems to be working so well, let's go ahead and attach it to the drum kit and uh, see if we can play with it. Well, I think that's been fairly successful. Um, quite happy with how that turned out, so uh, we can go ahead and start 3D printing some designs in the future. Um, this is working great. It's a... Uh... Actually, as a test, let's go ahead and put the same symbol. Okay, so I've applied the same symbol that's on this uh, crash here to our pad that we've created here. That is working awesomely. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and uh, keep your eyes peeled for the future where we may end up creating some rubber pads. Take care and bye for now.